This video has taken an extraordinarily long time to make, but I am so proud of it and so proud of what I have made here. I'm very excited to show you what I have been up to. And it all began absolutely months ago when Dodo said, hey, can, can somebody help make a hub for this nether highway that I'm building? And I said yes, and then I didn't do it. But now I have, and everybody rejoices. So let me show you what this process was like, and I will take you along this little building journey with me, with a few other little surprises along the way. Now let's begin. Hello, and welcome back to Neocraft. I haven't tried it now. A lot has happened since I have seen you last. I am uh, all kitted out. I have uh, really good armor. Enchanted it all in um, Orbeven's villager farm because he allowed me to use it, which I was so lucky that I've been stocking up on emeralds. So all of this is great. All of my tools are great. I have a trident now that I bought at the shopping district. It took a long time to grind all this out, but like I'm, I'm feeling good. I've got an amazing bow. I might actually be better off now than I was before I died. So I guess thank you, Pancake, for the murder, but not thank you too much. Now I have been clearing out a bunch of stuff here because I need these materials. But we're gonna we're gonna get to that a little bit later. Right now, I have other things to show you. The Moss Mama's eye is back, but Mac has both the eyes right now. The one that we stole from Pancake and the one that I guess is um, ingrown into Mac's face. I don't really know. I I don't really know. I guess that's the end of that sentence. We will have to discuss what to do with the eyes as a group with the Moss Men. But Mossification is Emin. This is new. It, I was gonna say mossification is eminent, but look at this. Ooh, we're getting fancy up in here. The nether hub has been evolving. If you haven't seen this stuff before, Dodo is, um, he's making a, a big subway system basically out of the nether hub. And it's really, really cool. And of course, being a redstone expert, I know exactly how it works. But right now we have to go to Carl, which is the name of the shopping district to check my poverty shack, because even though I'm not poor anymore, stuff has been moved around. Hold on, I keep getting distracted. Yeehaw, dirt for sale. Not dirt, okay. Ooh, Dodo redid the, redid the cavern entrance. I, I need to check the poverty shack first. I keep getting waylaid. Jungle planks and wheat, and oh, this is from Minecrabo. Thank you, buddy. And I guess I will take all this fish and keep eating it. You know what? I'm taking these two. They were a gift. They're mine now. No one can ever have them again. So I want to test out this elevator. Does it matter which button I hit? I guess we'll find out. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what? You're kidding me. That is so cool. Oh, we are... What in the world is this? What is it? Oh, no, I'm, I'm a redstone expert. I will tell you exactly what this is and how it works. Um, we have rails. Are there carts? Wait, hold on. There's composters, composters. There's a shulker box. Let's investigate. I can't touch it. I, okay. Can I touch it from here? It won't open, will it? No. Nope. An offense post, which is obviously for putting things in those chests. What does, this, what does this do? I mean, I know exactly what it does, and over here you can see levers. This machine, you, when these go, they're gonna go this way, and then these things are gonna turn on, and so then the slime boxer, boxers, blocks are going to do some stuff and oh I, help uh, this is see gift coming in handy the jungle planks are going to save me right now and get me out of here oh i have double jump oh, that could get me out of here too if i had remembered that that was a thing there's a bunch of furnaces with hoppers so this is smelting stuff this is going to take stuff back and forth to be smelted are there anything in these chests there's absolutely nothing. 
Are there anything in the hoppers to say this is what should go into the hoppers? No. But there's hoppers down here as well. Um, and they're moving this way. They're all... These ones go into here and something gets smelted, so we're smelting something. And then the hoppers all move this way and they're taking stuff out of the composter, composters and out of the furnaces and they're all going in a general that way direction where they're gonna do something else, I would assume. Um, they go this way and they go into this dropper, which is gonna poop them into the shulker box. This is, I figured it out. This is all a big shulker box filler. Dodo is tired of putting things into his shulker box manually and that's what this is for. I, the size of my brain alarms me sometimes. Ow. Why is there a barrel right there? Hmm? Is that a barrel from in here? Why is there a barrel? What are you? You're nothing. We, that's what you are. Let's go employ our redstone genius in more places. Boop. This is so goddamn cool. I'm sorry. I am not- I cannot get over this. Dodo, you're a genius. And so am I, figuring out your shulker box filler like that. Now, the main event today is the nether hub here. There is this central area where the portal to spawn is and all of the wings of the nether hub are going to link up into this central place right here. And I have to build it. And I, I've i been turning this around in my head for a good minute now, trying to figure out uh, what it should look like. And I think I have some pretty cool ideas, but we're going to get to that later. Right now, I have to get back to my base because as you may know, I have been building roads across the whole server infrastructure and I've wanted to put uh, mud bricks and packed mud blocks into the the jungle areas of the server there, there's other bits over there not my jungle area um, and I mud mud blocks are really hard to get they're really annoying they take a long time so or Beaven has built me one here that I'm going to incorporate into my base which my base is another thing that we need to talk about in a minute because I'm having thoughts and and doubts, but um, we'll talk about that later. You're gonna wanna stand between these two things and you're gonna have your shovel in your right hand. Got it. Okay. And you look at the underside of the obsidian block. Oh, this is amazing. It is pretty cool. And now our mud supply has begun. So that should make building those roads a whole lot easier. Now, for the most part, oh, where's my face? For the most part, I'm going to just do the roads off camera and I will give you little updates as they go along and show you how far I've gotten. But before I get to the main part of the video in the, the nether hub, I wanna talk about this base because as you might have noticed if you've been here for a while, it's taken me a really long time to make progress on this, and I like the stuff that I have done. The problem is that I really want to do things that don't fit with this so much. They might fit more with this, but even this, like I look at this and I'm like, I could make this look so much cooler. Let me show you what I mean. This is just a really quick little thing that I drew up in a creative world. And obviously it's not complete whatsoever. This is just like a bottom little nub. Like imagine you're only seeing this part and there's like a whole rest of it above. But I'm imagining these old, ignore that, That's that was a mess. I'm imagining these old wooden and stone houses that were built into the side of this cave, which was kind of the idea that I had been going with already, but I like these colors. It has a less ambitious color scheme. And the reason that I had picked all those colors before is because I wanted to really, really challenge myself. And I did challenge myself, but like maybe a little too much. Maybe I challenged myself out of enough motivation. But imagine that these are like the sides of the wall, right? And this is just built into it. And it used to be a whole complete, like nice looking furbished house. And now it's falling into ruin. And so the plant life in the cave is kind of taking it back. 
I have a plan that I want to do around the mega base that I have wanted to do since the beginning. And it will look good with what is already there and it will look good with this. But I want to put two gigantic, gigantic trees growing out the sides and up the side of the cliff face. And this color scheme is going to work amazing with that. I don't know. G give me your thoughts. But all of the wood that I was gathering at the beginning that I showed you, that forest that I was chopping down, is to make those gigantic trees. And so if I make this look like it's out of the same type of wood, that could look really cool too. I don't know. I don't want to get rid of what I already have, but I don't think I want to continue building in the same way that I have been. What do you think I should do? What would you like to see? Now, I can't promise that I will um, just do what everybody wants me to do, um, <laughs> but I will take it into consideration. Since I'm making those two giant trees, I was imagining maybe the throne room, instead of those warped wood pillars, they could be these like twisting dark oak roots that are coming down with leaves dripping down them, and it could be a way bigger chamber and a bigger tree and a bigger throne seat at the end of it. I just think it could look really cool. I think I could do better with it. So let me know what you think. And in the meantime, we must get to building a nether hub. So this is what I have so far. This is just an outline of the shape, the bottom part of the shape. It's going to go up a good bit higher, but this was actually a menace to try to figure out. Not in the least because these guys, <laughs> I had to measure it out with these wool grid things because I kept like one little block off messes this whole thing up, you know, because it's perfectly symmetrical. And so I measured it out and it's looking good, but I need a stupid amount of copper. There's this copper in here right now. And then there's a whole field of it out here. And then there's a bunch more of it over here, but I need a lot more. So I have to go mine a bunch of this. I probably need like a whole double chest of copper blocks. So, um, wish me luck. Now that is much more like it. Look at all of this. There's so much. And this is not all of it. There's more over here. And I am really hoping that this will be enough. This took uh, like over an hour to get all of this. And uh, this is how much is in the, the copper chest. I did mine like a little bit more from these as they oxidize and put them in here. But look at all of this. Oh my goodness. I really am not certain that that will be enough though. I still might need to get more. But anyways... While I have been out and about, um, I had a row of shulker boxes here, and Dodo snuck by and turned them all upside down, and I didn't think that much of it until I looked into here and I saw this. And I... he... he doesn't know that I poked around in the... the that floating chest or hanging chest in Cavern. I want to go see if that was the wheat from there. I want to see if that one is gone. Oh, staff only. Don't mind if I do. Oh, there's a chest over here that says Bradley. What has this got? 128 gold blocks? What have I been doing with 128 gold blocks? I think... Ooh. Sensitive redstone do not touch. Thank you. In this room, this is sensitive redstone? What if I touch it? Oh, there's a hopper. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna break through this wall. Oh. I broke a little more than I thought I would. Oh, this is done. And the chest is, I'm assuming since the chest is gone or moved, that wheat was the wheat. How did Dodo know that I touched it? I swear he's a wizard. Unless he didn't know and this is like entirely coincidental, but I feel like he did. I feel like he knows. I feel like he knows everything. Let's see if I can do this. Ow. Oh my God. If I didn't have this, this regen, and resistance, I bet I would have died there. Mmm. Okay. Gonna pretend like that never happened. I have done a lot. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, it's huge. So this is just the, the template, basically. Uh, a lot of it will remain stone because, I mean, if you look at the, the style of the nether hub and the little... The little sample bit that's right here, a lot of it is stone and then decorated with the mangrove and uh, brick and copper. 
I have this giant outline that we're gonna make look fancy and decorate and stuff and a good bit of the stone will be changed and we're gonna do some trims with copper and brick and all that stuff and also gosh this place is so unsafe it's so unsafe oh ah oh hello I just saved your life Dodo just stopped by and gave me pig step look at this look at this <laughs> it's right there Oh my god, I love this song so much and every time I join a server I'm like first step I'm gonna get pig step and then I never do but now I have it I did pay three diamond blocks for it, but I would have paid ten. Don't tell dodo Click this. You look beautiful Beyond. in your skin. Can I just say? Thank you. Yeah. And now you murder me for it. And now I murder. Look at that. Oh my god. Let's free cam this. We have all the numbers on every single clock face. And of course, every clock is pointing at a different time. Because this is the nether, clocks don't work. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, it's so cool. Let's approach the nether hub from over here. This is the the northeast corner. Also, these blocks were here, left by Roxy, trying to help me figure out what I should do with the towers because I was really stumped on them for a minute. And also, she left this uh, this diamond block. Which, I, are, are you gonna take that, Roxy? It's just sitting there, tempting me every day. So this is what the hub looks like from the bot. It's so far away that you can't even see the, the numbers. Can we get close enough to see them? Will they load in from down here or are they just invisible? No, they're, they're not even close enough. These entrances will all have these tunnels in them eventually. In the end, this entrance here and the elytra entrances up there will be the only ways to get into the hub. So you go in here right now, now there's still a couple bits in here that I need to finish up that I'm not gonna do in this video, like these towers going into here. This is the only way right now to access the underneath of the nether from the roof because there is this trapdoor here. It used to be accessible through the main level of the hub, but obviously the main level has shifted. So that is the way to get down into the, 
the main part of the nether. You can use any one of these towers, every single one of them goes in there. So, you go up into here, and this is the main area. The only thing in here that I still want to do something with are these parts of the roof here. Because, I mean, this looks a little bit naked, and maybe I should just put some copper slabs in there. Maybe that would be good enough. I don't know. But I, I want to see what you guys suggest, if you have any ideas of what I can do with that. So, obviously, this is the portal. This is the pendulum that swings down in the clock tower resting here at the bottom, and this takes you to spawn. So, obviously, if you have an elytra, you can just fly up there which I will do in a second, but I want to show you the non-elytra entrance first. So to get up there without an elytra, you take any of these ladders upwards, and then there is this contraption here dangling from the ceiling that you can go upwards on further that's going to take you to the second railing. And you can walk all the way around this with the railing, but for right now, we're just going to head directly upwards again, past the elytra entrance, and then you get up here into this little doorway and this is the uh i don't know what it's called the clock tower room is what i'm gonna call it so this is uh actually what the inside of a lot of clock towers kind of look like i was ready to build a bunch of huge gears in the middle here but then i looked up reference pictures and no it's usually just a, a platform in the middle that controls gears connected directly to the clock faces, not just a bunch of gears sitting in the room. So this is what I made. The gears are on the clock faces, and as this swings, I would imagine that the time would change. Obviously, it can't swing. This is Minecraft, but we use our imagination. And then there's weights here that are kind of uh, going to rock back and forth as the pendulum swings, except it can't because it's Minecraft. But use your imagination. And then there's a bunch of chests and stuff on the sides of the room. Uh, one of these piles, this one here, actually has a bunch of stuff in it that I was using to build up here and in the next room above us, because yes, there is another room. You can go up any of these ladders to get to the final room up here, because when I was asking the near crafters what they... what they... ah, no, what they wanted in another hub, they said they wanted a meeting room. And so... We have a meeting room. This was so much fun for me because I got to kind of abandon the the aesthetic of the rest of the place and just do whatever I wanted to and not really bother about matching to the rest of the hub that much because this is kind of its own little area. So there's ladders in all four corners and there's a bunch of little meeting spaces and I actually find the idea really funny that there could be multiple groups of people meeting up here at once with the voice chat on and like one here and one over here and they're just far enough away that like you can't hear everything but you hear enough to make having multiple conversations annoying and that's the level of mildly chaotically annoying that I aspire to be. So every little sitting area is a little bit different. They have some weird bits of greenery around them. And then these spiral steps take you up to the top platform here that is in the dome. And there's this plant that's growing here that's hanging down. Let's see what it looks like from the outside. That's what we got up here. <laughs> this is so cool. So the only part of this build that kind of annoys me is that I have to have all these buttons everywhere because a lot of this is in a crimson forest. Light levels do not stop those pig people from spawning. So I got to have these all over the place, which there's nothing we can really do about that. I don't want to put string all over the floor. I don't like seeing the hitbox appear as I walk around it. So buttons it is. Also, there's two little pig people here. And here, show us your sword. Show us your sword. Come on. I know you have it. Show us your sword. There it is, yeah. <laughs> They've been up here for hours. They haven't grown up, which is very exciting for me because I actually used to have an SMP with just friends and family called Pig Baby SMP. And it was purely because we got one of these little guys in another hub and it never grew up. So we named him Pig Baby and then we all loved him. So now there's a couple of them up here and this is just where they get to live now. This is where they get to live. I hope they enjoy it. This has been weeks in the making and I am so, so incredibly happy with how this turned out. I'm so proud of it. 
and I think that this is the largest survival build I have ever made. Now, there is actually one more thing that we need to do before we finish up, and that is help the Moss Mama. So as you know, we stole the Moss Mama's eye. Oh, there's a few other things that I forgot to tell you too. This is a key card to Cavern Super Smelter, which is the thing that I was trying to figure out what it was before, the redstone thing, where I was like, oh, this is a shulker box filler. It's not, it is a super smelter, and I have a special key card access. Everybody else who's not in Cavern has to pay for it, but I don't have to pay for it. I get the key card. The other cool thing is I have Pig Step which I am going to make a music box. Here we go. We're gonna vibe. We're gonna vibe. Yeah. Wait, that's not a good angle. Yeah. <laughs> now, the important thing for the mama is that these are the pieces of her crystal that I've collected to keep safe. And we need to return them to her. So we are going to go to the Mossmen base and put these with the Mama to help her grow back to power. And this is a very important thing for us to be doing right now because Dodo and Velxa have gone around and blown up all the patches of moss on the server. All the ones that we placed around people's bases, the ones that we placed at the shopping district, all of them are gone. Destroyed. And so we must make a move now. Here. Is that, there's a skeleton horse at our base. That's amazing. All right, let's go into the base. It is a proper warren of tunnels down here. I'm going to find a good place for the eye. I think we'll put it right down here. And with the crystal restored, the moss will begin to spread again. Now that is all the time we have today. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. I had such a blast making this and I'm so excited to begin working on the base and of course the moss. I say begin working on the base, but work, work on my new base ideas. You feel me? But anyways, thank you for watching, and if you think it deserved it, then please give this a like and comment and share and subscribe and all those good things. And uh, the, the Cyclops Netherhub and I will see you next time. Bye.